Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're looking at five mods that will help speed up and automate your prep for your D&D 5th edition games. I'll give you a quick summary of what each of the mods does, I'll walk you through the macros that I use when I prep my games, and I'll show you a quick and easy way to transfer these macros from one game to another. Now, because we're using mods, a pro account will be required in order to do this. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. Alright, let's dive in. The first mod we're going to talk about is Encounter Helper, which is written by the awesome Kurt Jagers. This mod is part of the standard Roll20 mod library, so you can just come out here and search for Encounter Helper in this dropdown, and you'll find this mod. Get it installed in your game and be good to go. Now, Encounter Helper is used to create encounters that can be easily deployed at game time. A lot of times what I do during my prep is I get all of my monsters on the board and then I highlight them all and I send them to the GM layer and then I need to move them around into the appropriate places. Like maybe I want this zombie to be over here and this one to be over here and they're all going to descend on this gingerbread house. And then at game time, I need to flip between layers to move each of these tokens to the appropriate layer, roll initiative for all of them, and then get combat started. And that can be a bit of a tedious process. There's multiple steps involved there. Well, what Encounter Helper lets you do is set all of that up in advance so that when game time comes around, you click one button and it gets all of those tokens moved to the right layer and then another button to roll initiative for them. So let me show you how we actually do that. So I'm just going to put all these back on the token layer to start with. And what I'm going to do is highlight all of them. And the first, so what I'm going to do is highlight all of them. And the first macro that I'm going to show you is this one right here called create encounter. So I've got all those three zombies highlighted. I'm going to click create encounter and I get a prompt asking me, what do I want to call this encounter? I'm going to call this the zombie attack and then submit. And now we see that we have created encounter zombie attack with three tokens. So now that encounter has been created and then I can actually view the list of encounters I've created using this macro right here called encounter list. And what this does is pulls up a list of all the encounters that live on this page. And what I can do is hide all of the tokens related to zombie attack with this H button right here. So I click that and it automatically moves all the relevant tokens to the GM layer. I can show them again by clicking S, so at game time we click that, and you'll notice now when I click the S, I also get a message from Encounter Helper saying that I can roll initiative for all of those tokens because I also have the group init mod installed. And group init is not one of the ones I'm going to spend a lot of time with today, but I'm just going to say that group initiative is by the arcane scriptomancer himself, the Aaron, this is also part of the standard mod library, so you can just search for that. But when you've got that, what it'll do is it will automatically roll initiative for all of the tokens that make up a particular encounter. So one button click to get them on the token layer, a second button click to roll initiative for everybody, and then your fight is ready to go. Now the actual code for those macros looks like this. And to view the list of encounters, it's exclamation point EH list. To create an encounter, it's exclamation point EH create. And then I've got a prompt in here asking, what do you want to call the encounter? I've actually done an entire video on Encounter Helper. So everything that's involved in setting up, everything that's involved in creating, and a whole bunch of other things that it can do. So I'll put a link down to that video in the description. But these couple of functions, the create and the list functions, are the ones I use the most frequently. After that, I have one more macro related to Encounter Helper called the Encounter Page List. And what this does is shows me a list of all the pages in my game that have encounters defined on them. So I can see here that I have encounters on my start page, my test page, and this map, which is the gingerbread page. And the code for that one looks like this, where it's literally just exclamation point EH page list. And I'll put the code for all these macros down in the video description too, so you can just copy and paste it. But really, Encounter Helper speeds up my prep quite a bit because it lets me get all of my encounters easily defined, and then at game time, it's easy to run them. Our next mod is Token Mod. Written by the arcane scriptomancer himself, the Aaron, 
Token Mod is a veritable Swiss Army knife of functionality and allows you to manipulate all the properties of a given token. And for this video, I use Token Mod when setting up tokens for my player characters. So when I'm starting a new game, setting up a new character for my players, what I'll do is drag that player's token onto the board. You can see that by default it has none of the bars configured here. If I open up this token's properties, there's nothing set for any of the bars. So instead of going through and clicking on each one of these individually, I have this macro called PC Setup, which sets all of the values for me automatically. And if we open this up again, it sets bar one to be the HP, bar two to be the AC, and then bar three to be the passive wisdom and or the passive perception. And that's all defined here. I also have it set to update the character's default token so that this will persist every time I drag out a new copy of that token. So if I drag out Milo again, you can see it's got all of the same values set here. So what does the code for this one look like? So this one looks like this, where we're calling token mod, and then on means we are setting values for the character. I'm actually also turning on the vision properties of the token and dark vision, and I'm setting that dark vision to go out to 60 feet. And then bar one, I am linking to HP, the HP property of the character sheet, Bar two is being linked to the AC, and then bar three is being linked to the character's passive wisdom or their passive perception. And then lastly, this default token keyword tells the system to update the character's default token with these new values. And then I have a similar macro called NPC setup, which I use when I set up NPCs. Again, we're calling token mod, we're setting bar one to be HP. Now, NPCs in 5e have a property called NPC AC. So that's what we use when we're setting their armor class. And then just like before, we're updating the default token. And I don't bother with vision settings or passive perception for the NPCs, although I could if I wanted to. Next up, we come to Path to Window or Door, which was developed by the fantastic Sylvain Groch Clickquat. Now, if you use published modules in your games, you'll know that many of them haven't been updated to use Roll20's new doors and windows system. So this mod quickly converts lines that represent doors into actual doors. And I've done an entire video on that and I'll put a link to that video down in the description. But just to show you how it works, here we are right now in Blood Vaults of Sister Alcava. This is a module done by Kobold Press. It's a fantastic module. I've actually done a video on this one too, which I'll put down in the description. And you can see here that my doors are just these orange lines. They're not using Roll20's actual door feature. So if I bring back my helper menu here and I click Convert Doors, you can see that it goes through and it has changed all of the lines that were representing doors into actual doors. And it'll do this for Windows too. This is a really handy script and this just saved me a ton of time in going through and changing orange lines into actual doors in Roll20. So I use this script all the time when I'm prepping pre-made modules. It really is a massive time saver. Now the code for that one looks like this, where it's exclamation point, P-T-W-O-D, path to window or door, dash dash convert doors, so we're converting door lines, on this current page. And there are other options that are discussed both in the documentation of the mod and in the other video that I did, which is linked down in the video description. When you're creating a new map, there are a bunch of different dynamic lighting settings that you set up, like if it's daylight, if you should use explorer mode, if barriers should block movement. The dynamic lighting tool, written by the amazing Keith Curtis, gives you quick access to all those settings. And just like the other mods we've talked about, it's available here in the mod library. So when you're in your game, and I'll just pull up my helper menu here, and we're going to go to dynamic lighting, the dynamic lighting tool gives you quick access to all of these different settings. So I can toggle day mode on or off. I can state whether or not barriers restrict movement. I can set the token vision settings to update on drop. I can turn on explorer mode. If I have a token selected and run that command again, I'll get information for that token's vision settings. So I can see that the zombie has vision, night vision out to 60 feet, and then I can tweak its vision settings here as well. I can automatically switch it out to 90 feet or 120 feet, or I can take its dark vision away. So this gives you quick access to 
all of the vision settings for a particular token, all of the light settings for a particular page, and it really helps you get all of those settings set up correctly very fast. The code for this one is very simple. It is literally just exclamation point DL tool. And that gives you this nice little panel that shows up in chat. Our last mod today is Token Action Maker, also written by the amazing Keith Curtis, Kevin, and Brett. And this one takes all of the attacks, spells, saves, and skills that a character has and turns them into clickable buttons that display at the top of the screen. And this gives you quicker access to the bad guy's attacks at game time. And while it's a small thing to do during prep, the impact that it has during gameplay is significant. And the beauty of this is you can create these token actions for multiple tokens at a time. So a lot of published modules include token pages like this one, which comes from Arcadia magazine. And what I'm going to do is just press control a on the keyboard to select all of the tokens at once. And then I'll bring back my menu here and I'm going to click token actions. And you can see that it's created token actions for each of the selected tokens. So now when I click on one of them, I get a list of all their abilities up here, which I can then click to perform. So like I can make attacks with the librarian's quarterstaff. I can have them make a saving throw. I can see a list of all the spells that they have, and I can click on any one of them to view that spell's detail. Now, obviously the more tokens you select at a time, the longer it takes to run. So I wouldn't do this with like a hundred tokens all at once, but still being able to select 10 or 12 or, or 20 all at once is still a significant number of creatures and prep work handled for you in a very short amount of time. And the code for this one, if we bring back my helper sheet here, is literally just exclamation point TA. Nice and simple. Now there is one other macro on my little menu here that we haven't talked about, and that's this token marker macro. This one doesn't actually have a mod associated with it. Literally all this does is just rolls a D12. And that's because there are times when I need a token on the board, something to store notes in or to serve as a room marker. And so I take this D12 and I drag it onto the board and then I can put notes into the GM notes section of this token. Or if I'm using this as say a room number, I can move the marker to say, okay, this is room number 12 or something like that. The code for this one is very, very basic as well. It is literally just whack GM roll 1D12. And then of course there is this GM utils menu. That's what's actually giving me this little helper box in chat. This gives me quick access to all of these helper macros without having to clutter up my toolbar. So what's happening here is we are whispering to the GM. So I'm the only one who sees this. I'm using the default role template in roll 20, which is what gives me the purple bar right here. The name of this item is going to be GM utils. You can see that showing up here. And then here we have a list of all of the buttons that are showing up. So here, encounter page list, that's the text that displays on the button. And then parentheses tilde page list is the name of the ability that's being called from this character sheet. So we're saying, look at this character sheet and call the page list ability, which is this one up here. So you may be wondering why I put all these macros into a character sheet. And there are actually two reasons for this. First, it gives me a really easy way to move all of the macros from one game to another. I run a lot of games. I don't want to have to copy all of these macros individually. So what I can do is take this character sheet, this GM helpers character sheet, and using the Roll20 transmogrifier, I can click this button and then I can move this GM helper character sheet into any of my other games that I want literally just drag it right over and then all those macros are going to be present in the new game so I just find GM helper drag it over and now this attack of the mind crawlers game is going to have the GM helper sheet in there all the macros are there I will need to make sure that I have all the mods installed but all of the macros are there I'm not going to forget to copy any of them over you can of course transmogrify individual macros one at a time however I just want to move them all in one quick push and this allows me to do that the other reason I have this set up as a character sheet has to do with the encounter helper mod I talked about earlier in order for that to work successfully there has to be a token on the board called encounter token 
And what I used to do was roll that D12, drag it out, rename it Encounter Token, and I would do that for every single map. That just got to be tedious. So I finally hit on the idea that I could create an Encounter Token and then assign it to this GM Helper character sheet. So now what I do is I can just drag that GM Helper out onto the board as if it were a character, it creates that encounter token for me. It's got the right name. It's all set. And now I can just begin creating encounters. So it just speeds up my prep work a little bit more to have this encounter token available. And the way that we do that is by assigning it to a character sheet. So I put this token onto that character sheet, put all of my helper macros into that character sheet. And now when I move that character sheet from game to game, I have all my macros, I have the encounter helper token, and I'm ready to go and begin prepping my next game. So there you have it, five mods that make prep work for 5e games a whole lot easier. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.